Bioprinting is a mechanism which includes software and hardware for the design of living tissue and organs. The field originated about 15 years back, but significant advances over the past few years have got us to a stage where artificial tissue is being uh, used widely for research and development for drug development and some early experiments in organ development are also showing promise. Now, there are about a dozen firms in this space, but it is still early days. Gartner, a research firm, predicts that we are about five to 10 years away from maturity of this field, which quite frankly is not too far out. The scale of some of the tissue that people are able to create and use, and this is available commercially as well, is still very small. And as we look at uh, 3D printing organs, one of the biggest obstacle researchers face is to overcome uh, the challenge of figuring out creating 3D printed blood vessels. So let's find out more from uh, Dr. Shokufar about advances in uh, bioprinting and her own work in the area. My name is Tolu Shokufar. I'm Associate Professor of Bioengineering at the University of Illinois in Chicago. I have two major research areas as a focus of my research lab, uh, which is uh, in-situ bioelectron microscopy of biological tissues and proteins for diagnostics of disease, as well as uh, nanomaterials and biomaterials for regenerative medicine. As a main focus of my bio-nanomaterial research in nanomedicine, I also work uh, with 3D bioprinting for regenerative medicine. Can you possibly make something living? So that is the idea. Can we bring the idea of 3D printing into 3D bioprinting? So what bioprinting is, in simple word, we can say, how about we try to construct something that is used in the body and a living system? With this, we can even categorize the 3D bioprinting systems. Either we can 3D bioprint a scaffold and then use that to replicate uh, or replace parts of the body that is unfunctional. Or we can actually print living cells and then use that to actually replace an organ that is not functional. Well, I have to add that the second part of it is um, way uh, uh, down the road and is the future idea of 3D bioprinting that everybody is hoping to achieve. Going back again to 3D printing of scaffolds where you do not have any cells, that is, more, uh, that is actually a more approachable uh, application of 3D bio in, uh, bioprinting right now because you don't have to worry about keeping the cells alive, keeping them functional, providing the environment for them to basically replicate what they have to do. Rather than that, you can actually print a part of the body that is missing, for example, uh, scaffolds for bone. That, those could be a good examples. You can actually use these 3D bioprinter products to better mimic the properties and the shape of the implant. You can even take CT scan of, uh, of a skull, and if there is a case of accident for maxillofacial uh, injuries, so you can make a 3D scan of the missing part, and you can really repli replicate with all the detailed missing part uh, the construct from a biologically uh, compatible biomaterial. And that could be replaced uh, for, for the missing part, and the human cells by themselves the tissue by themselves can uh, uh, encounter the whole scaffold and try to regenerate and mimic the construct. So as a summary, I would like to say that 3D bioprinting is the next generation, uh, which we all look forward to it. It has two concepts behind it. One, either you can print biomaterials that could be used and implanted within the body, or you can actually print cells with the mimic extracellular environment, that could actually mimic the, uh, an organ or a tissue in the body. 
my research uh, for now, we are focusing on uh, two aspects. We are w working on developing certain type of scaffolds uh, and with a specific bio-ink, development of that specific bio-ink that can help the regeneration of nervous system. So we are incorporating and developing our uh, actual matrix, which would be also an hydrogel-based ma matrix. We are incorporating some components uh, which could which are compatible. Like uh, if you think of it as a if you think of a bio ink as a nano comp or a composite material, we have that hydrogel base. We have other components that can provide uh, electrical conductivity. They could be graphene based, uh, which we're incorporating them as well, as well as stem cells. And an additional to that, we change that the stem cells in some other cases, different bio inks to astrocyte cells. And then we can apply electrical impulses to help and stimulate the regenerative uh, regeneration of astrocytes, then to have a proper axonal regeneration. We are also starting to work with a GI system that could be essential and very important for toxicology studies. Um, so where uh, it seems right now, a lot of uh, drug development, uh, drug discoveries, a uh, billion dollar industry right now is suffering through really coming up with a good method to do discoveries of the drug. Right now, um, I would say, well, they have to go through uh, animal studies and then clinical trials. And many of the cases, the drug is actually fail, would fail in the case with the animal studies and would not even get approval for further studies. And there are a lot of costs and other ethical issues related to that. Uh, as uh, the last example of what we do in the lab, uh, we are working with uh, manufacturing uh, 3D printed uh, um, scaffolds that could be used for lower jaw or maxillofacial uh, uh, reconstruction. Uh, that is extremely um, valuable for the cases of uh, traumatic injuries. In this case, we are not bioprinting any cells, rather we print an environment consider, consisting of hydroxypatite, a uh, bone-forming uh, environment uh, that can replicate those missing parts. The future of bioprinting and the main whole beautiful idea is to maybe at some point we can save lives and, um, and really print a, a Organs that are not functional at this point, helping people that need today uh, uh, donors of organs. But that's a beautiful future which I see for it. So today, uh, it has been possible, for example, to 3D bioprint uh, a, a kidney or a liver. Uh, it, you look at it, it actually does look like or feel like, uh, you know, um, coming from a you know, a cadaver or like a patient uh, recently, uh, you know, passed away, but is not really functional, is not uh, working as it's supposed to. So that's the future. So to really take it to the next level, overcome the barriers, overcome the milestones right now, uh, uh, and hopefully make that uh, bioprinted tissue or organ a functional uh, organ. For future application, I would like to mention uh, drug screening would be uh, amazing if it's possible to get to that point where we really uh, don't need to, you know, go through all the, um, the required steps that may even fail in some points. We can have even an organ on a chip uh, or a natural organ that we uh, can use for drug testing and drug screening. We don't need to go through a lot of animal studies from small scale all the way to big animal studies. We then need, can avoid a lot of unnecessarily uh, required human trials. There is a lot that I believe uh, 3D bioprinting can offer us and there is a lot that could be done in future. And I personally believe that something that might be coming from a Star Trek or science fiction is no science fiction anymore. Right now is just human creativity and how much 
we are willing and wanting to make that happen. As long as we desire and as long as we dream, I believe that's possible. Mm -hmm. 